Hello everyone, it's Leah from Dime Culture. And as you can see, today's video is a little different than what we normally do here at Dime Culture. Normally my videos are tabletop views, you can't see my face, and yeah, it's all about showing you art processing. Uh, today, actually, it's still about art. I just want to go over one of the things that I do prior to painting with my acrylics. Um, and that is prepping my surface. So um, let's get started and like, like, let's just dive into it. So what I do is I'm painting a lot of my acrylic paintings on this. So I'm using student grade watercolor paper from Canson. If you um, follow me on Instagram at Dime Culture, this is paperwork that you've seen me use before and I've talked about it before. Um, it's really good for beginners and watercolor painting as a beginner, but it's also really good for acrylic painting because it's thick paper and thick paper is really, I find it really handy for doing acrylics because you can pack on the layers and your paper doesn't get all droopy and gross. Also, let's just quickly touch on the size. It's huge, right? Okay, so it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not the biggest size they have. Um, it's a 12 by 18, but it's a nice size because of your options. So if you're having a day where you wanna go full on, you wanna use up the full sheet, be very expressive, um, use big brushes, I don't know, just really deep dive into something, this is great because you have a big surface for it. But what's also great about having a large paper blocks in general for art is that you can cut it down and make smaller sizing. So then for example, right now, I know we're all in self isolation and you know doing our social distancing and you know doing our part right but you still need some outside air and one way you can go about that is to sit in your backyard on your front porch or on your balcony if you live in an apartment building you know you have options for just being outside and taking your art with you and taking huge stuff like this super awkward, right? But if you cut down your paper, you can still paint with whatever medium you want on a more portable format. Okay, so that's what I use paper-wise. And then I use paint brushes also for um, prepping my uh, paper for painting with acrylics. And the trick here for when it comes to using paint brushes and prepping it is all about the paintbrush not having loose, you know, hair that comes out. So I use this one here and it does have hairs, like little bristles that come out of the paintbrush. So frequently I do have to sometimes pick it out. Sometimes I leave it. Okay, I usually leave it. I'm lazy. <laughs> but if you want to avoid getting that piece of texture in there, um, don't use a brush like this that has the loose bristles, but honestly, when using acrylics, what's great about it is that you're packing on layers and creating texture that way. So having some boo-boos like that, it won't be as noticeable as if we were say, for example, painting with watercolors and having that kind of thing happen. So when you're using your watercolors, um, having hair that comes out of your paintbrush is, is not a good thing. Now, um, what I actually do to prep my paper for painting so that I can, you know, really abuse the paper with paint is gesso. So, I don't know if this is in focus. Is it? <gasps> it is. Okay. So, this here is gesso from Golden Brand. Um, and... Gesso is something that you paint on top of a surface like paper or wood or a canvas to prep it prior to painting. Um, gesso makes it so that the surface itself will accept the paint, the surface is protected from the paint or adds texture so you can paint. So for example, if I were to paint on a wooden surface, so a wood panel, the natural oils of your wood 
eventually over time will seep into your paint. It'll change the color of your painting. And if you want to have it so that your paintings last a really long time, you want to gesso the surface prior to painting so then that way your colors stay true to what they were the day they were painted. If you are using paper like myself, because one, paper, super handy. We all have it when we're crafters and artists and stay at, and you know, people like just people. Um, but also paper is really storable. So I still have paintings from when I was a teenager in my house, just hidden behind couches and things. So canvases are really hard to hide or painting on paper. You can put it in a drawer, put it in a book, you know, they're easier to store. And gesso, if you are working in a physical journal, you can journal, you can paint on the journal sheets too, especially if those sheets are thin sheets, like thin pieces of paper. If you gesso them prior to painting, you're going to get less buckling. So it's going to make it so that your paper is just prepared for your painting with acrylics. And fun fact, gesso comes in many different types of forms and you yourself can adjust the gesso. So this one here is bright white. I don't know if that's in focus. I really don't know if it is. Um, <laughs> I have bright white. Golden has this one, semi-opaque and black, I believe. I don't think there's a fourth one. I might be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, but gesso itself is also tintable. So Golden, for example, has paint called high velocity uh, acrylic paint. And it's more like, say, ink. It's really thin. You can use it in a marker type of paint. Uh, and you could, what you could do is use something like that, mix it with your gesso, and then you could have a pink board or a orange board or orange paper, blue paper. And you can have that color underneath of your painting and then paint on top of it and you could still have that color visible through your paint um, through any of the cracks or spots you miss or even an area you just don't paint itself so gesso is one of those things that you know you can use it as is leave it white or you can tint it and still have colored uh, surfaces um, so yeah I love using gesso it's something that I used to do a long time ago and then when I got back into painting with acrylics, um, I, I made sure to get gesso itself to make sure that the surfaces that I'm using are being prepped. Okay, so I said a lot. Um, <laughs> so I just want today's video to be a short one. If you wanna actually watch me paint the gesso and prep a surface, head over to my Instagram. I will keep that story in the story highlights on my profile. Um, but it's very simple and basic. Really, I just shake it. Yep, shake it, shake it. And then I put my paintbrush in it, like right in here, and then just paint the paper nothing fancy I just do that and uh, yeah um, though tip before I forget is do this on a surface you don't mind getting dirty so what I do is I use a scrap board that I had from like forever ago like a white mounting board that I never used and uh, I paint I use it's now my designated gessoing board so I put it down on my desktop here and I just gesso on top of that and once everything's dry because you need to make sure this is dry prior to painting it's very important wait till the gesso dries then paint on top of it Ooh. also <laughs> before I sign off I have one more tip um, gesso more than one piece of paper at a time so if your surface for painting on top of allows, is a big surface, um, make paint more than one sheet. And also paint, if you have the big ones, paint the full large one, and then when it's dry, cut it. Because um, it is cuttable. It just makes the gessoing process easier versus cutting them smaller and then gessoing each one. 
Um, but yeah, definitely uh, make sure your surface is clean. Um, do more than one sheet at a time. That way, in case for some reason you either didn't like your painting and you're scrapping it, or if you're in the mood to paint one day, but then you go and see that you don't have your surface prepped and primed, you might lose the oomph to paint. You might lose the drive or the emotion that you're feeling. You know, you, you really, really, really want to do it and get it out and you're just like sitting waiting for your gesso to dry. So mm -hmm. yeah, batch gesso. Okay guys, that was a short video. Like I said it was gonna be. Um, if you have any comments, questions, leave it in the comment section below. And, you know, I know right now is a really tough time. And the only thing I can say is we're going to get through this. We're going to get through this together as a community if we all work together. Okay. So take a deep, calming breath. Let that energy out and stay magical, guys. Bye.